We'll continue on with hymn number 251. He lives, 251. We're doing something on the education today, so I thought hymn number 121, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Shall we go sing it from the mountaintops? Amen? Amen. 121. Let's all stand.
Senator. Please be seated. Thank you. All right, my mic is on now. All right, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Good to see everyone today. All right, um, a couple announcements today. Um, if you open your bulletin, we have a church in action. We have Monday, which is our first day of school for AJA and GLA. Amen. 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 Tuesday, we have our community service center, which will be open. And then Wednesday, we have our midweek manna. And if you, for some reason, can't make it, so I remind everyone that it is on YouTube and you can watch it live. And if you don't make it to watch it live, you can always watch it later. Pull it up anytime and watch it. So we also have a church, church transfer, the second reading. We will need, we'll need to take a vote on this. We have incoming Patricia Bruce from Waterford Riverside, Andrew and Stephanie Laughlin from Keeney, Texas, and Jessica Goodrich from Ithaca, Michigan. So if you could take a vote, all in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right, great. It's carried. We have another announcement as well. Come up. Happy Sabbath, family. Happy Sabbath. It's a high Sabbath today. We got something special happening, a baptism. Um, but I, that's not why I'm up here. I'm up here because um, we have been invited by the First Flint Church to help participate with a booth at the Genesee County Fair this coming week, um, August 20th to 26th. Um, the booth is open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And so we decided to help with the cost of that and also manning that, the church board did. And so we're looking for volunteers who would like to go help man the booth for different periods of the day. Um, there's a shift 9 to 1, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., another one from 1 to 4, and another one from 4 to 8. It's not rigid. It's not a rigid um, uh, schedule or whatever as far as what's being presented. But they do have a plan for um, each day of the week. Um, Monday through Sunday, um, whether it be Adventist education, Pathfinders, Adventurers, um, Health Ministries, um, Adventist Community Services, um, the Heroes of Hacksaw Ridge, Operation White Coat, BibleStudyOffer.com emphasis. So those are the different subjects on different days of the week. Um, so what we need to do is, um, if we are a department head in any of the areas, ministries of our church, if we could just get just a little something together, and if you could either talk to me or talk to the pastor and tell us what you have, whether you can or cannot or have somebody in your group participate, um, but we can at least get the stuff there and hopefully find someone from our church. Hopefully we'll have some willing participants who would like to go there and meet new people. Um, the county fair is up on Mount Morris Road, so it's on the north side of Flint. But still, there's people from all around, especially in our area, that would go up there for the fair and could possibly go by the booth and maybe pick up some literature or at least learn about the Adventist church. And it's not only about just trying to feed our Holly Church, but God's kingdom. So we want to help support and participate if we can, even if you can only go for an hour. Um, support, supporting each other is, is healthy for our church and um, for unity. So let me know, I can put a copy of this on the bulletin board, but please see me and or pastor um, after church so we can kind of get organized. Uh, um, August 20th to 26th. What was that? Oh, okay. All right, thank you. All right, and two more things. Um, we have a depression seminar coming up beginning in September sometime. So if you know anyone that's depressed or someone that could just use a little pick me up, a shot of Jesus and happiness, be mindful to invite them for that. And then also, go ahead. Dave, you didn't do it justice. Is anyone here stressed? <laughs> anyone here anxious, worried? This depression seminar, we've put them on at least three times here before, and it's been several years since we have done one. 
It's an excellent seminar. If you know someone, if you have any stress or worry in your life, this depression seminar can also really be retitled Your Guide to Good Mental Health. Anyone that's parents of young children, you should be there. Um, believe it or not, your children will cause you stress. Mine did. Uh, and I think I caused my parents stress. Um, but really, this is a wonderful um, seminar to go to. And it's amazing to me, having gone through it, seeing other people and recognizing depression in a different way. Um, like Dave said, it's going to start in September. It goes over lifestyle choices that help us deal with stress. It was actually authored by um, Dr. Neil Nedley, who grew up in the Troy Royal Oak area. He's done a wonderful job on this. So stay tuned for more announcements and keep your mind open for somebody that you might be able to invite to come to these meetings. Thanks. Alan, do you know if there, there will be a place to drop off those that create stress for us? <laughs> At the meeting. Uh, okay. No, uh, really, it's amazing. I choose a lot of times how to be stressed and what stresses me. So this meeting, these meetings help us deal with appropriately. Um, I, I don't want to tip the hand. You've got to come to the meeting because it's interesting. I'm sure some of these things you may look at and say, I'm that way or I know someone that way. I was talking to my sister several years ago, and she was talking in just knee-jerk reaction. I said, Julie, you're depressed. Click. She hung up on me. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of times people that stress us, when we go through, have a good mental health, um, these stresses will be changed. All right. And then the last announcement is I just want to give a shout out to Bonita's mom for her birthday. She turned 90. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. All right. Our call to worship today is found in the book of Psalm. Verse 9 through 13. O oh, Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O oh, house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Amen. Well, let's, let's have a quick prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you that we could be in your house of worship today. Lord, we come here today seeking a blessing, Lord, a blessing from you, the blessing of your Holy Spirit upon us, and the blessing, Father, to hear the words of life today. May you draw near to all of us, Father, and speak to our hearts. Today we pray, and we thank you for all the blessings, Lord, that you give us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. If you'll stand, we'll, we'll do our opening hymn, hymn number 439, and because I'm unfamiliar with it, I've got a little help.
We are blessed today to uh, have a baptism. And um, hold on. I was thinking it's been about uh, 20 years <laughs> since yep. Arlene's uh, mom, Ruby, and I studied with you and Ken. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes the seeds take a while, but we're glad that they brought fruit today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to, uh, it's actually my honor to go through these uh, baptismal vows with you. Okay. And afterwards, if, if you agree with uh, the statement, then just say amen or yes. Okay. And for the rest of the congregation, this is a chance to renew your vows also. So you can also say amen or, or yes. So the first is, I believe there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-persons. Amen. 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 I accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for my sins and believe that through faith in his shed blood, I am saved from sin and its penalty. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I renounce the world and its sinful ways and have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven my sins and given me a new heart. Amen. 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 I accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, my intercessor, in the heavenly sanctuary and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving Christ-centered life in my home and before the world. Amen. 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 I believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian. I covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study. Amen. Amen. I accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will. It is my purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep the law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and a memorial of creation. Amen. Amen. I look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality. As I prepare to meet the Lord, I will witness to his loving salvation and by, and by life and word help others to be ready for his glorious appearing. Amen. Amen. I accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church. Amen. Amen. I believe in church organization. It is my purpose to support the church by my tithes and offerings and by my personal effort and influence. Amen. Amen. I believe my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and will honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco in any form uh, for human consumption, and from the misuse or trafficking in narcotics or other drugs. Amen. Amen. I know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I purpose by the grace of God to fulfill his will by ordering my life in harmony with those principles. Amen. I accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be so baptized 
as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of my sins. Amen. Amen. I accept and believe the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, language, are invited and accepted into its fellowship. I desire to be a member of this local congregation of the World Church. Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, um, in uh, lieu of her baptism, I entertain the, uh, a uh, motion to accept her into our congregation. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 That's passed. Okay. <laughs> Hello again. All right, if the deacons would come forward. Today's offering is for our local church so that we can conduct the ministries and programs that benefit our church and community. Thank you for returning the Lord's tithe and providing an offering to support our church budget. Well, there's a spotlight on stewardship and here I'll read it. It says, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. And there's more that says here, we ended July with a positive balance in our church expense fund of $5,944 and one penny. Let us endeavor to keep it on the plus side as we take up the tuition subsidies for the new school year. So amen to that. So if we're able, let's bow our heads and have a prayer. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the many blessings that you have given us, Lord. Blessings of life, blessings of health, blessings of family, blessings of a church and of a church family. And Lord, as we return our tithe and our offerings, Lord, may you bless them, Father. May you cause them to go to further your kingdom, to further your work here on earth. And Lord, as we give, may you bless those that are able to give and bless those who are unable to give, Lord. And may you Bless us abundantly, Lord, and may you be glorified and lifted up in our offerings today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. young people is now time to come up and collect the lamb's offering and, and that will, the funds will be going for the worthy student fund 
And then after that, the children's story will be given to us by Len Poole. You guys know what Monday is? First day of school. Are you excited? Some people are excited. Not everybody's excited. <laughs> Some parents are excited. <laughs> Some parents are really excited. Well, I, I want to tell you about uh, a friend of mine that I had when I was a first grader. He was a neighbor, and I'd like you guys to help me tell the story. So when I do this, you say, oh, Ricky. Can you do that? Can we practice? Oh, Ricky. Very good, thank you. Because I heard that a lot when I was a kid. I heard that from Ricky's house a lot. Because Ricky, today they would have diagnoses and all these different names, but when I was a kid, he was just hyper and naughty. That's what we called kids back then that did those kinds of things. But at home, he would spill things a lot, which isn't necessarily naughty, except it was pretty clear it wasn't always an accident. One time he threw rocks at cars. Yeah, that was super naughty. He got in trouble for that. He had cut the hair on all of his sister's dolls. That was not good. He, he unplugged all the clocks in the house one day, so everybody was late for work. The worst thing he did, as I remember, is he took two cats, because like in our neighborhood, cats just kind of ran around, and they would come and go as they please. He got two of them, and he tied their tails together. It was mean, right? That's terrible. Because when one cat, the other, one cat tries to run, it pulls the tail of the other cat, which makes that cat mad, which results in a fight, which he thought was hilarious, but the cat owners did not. At Halloween, when like everybody had, when I was a kid, everybody had these little pumpkins and they had like a handle on them. He took scissors and he'd run along and cut the handle on the pumpkin. And so the kid's candy would fall all over the ground. That was... Right? He heard, we heard that a lot. At school, he'd stare out the window, and when the teacher was trying to teach stuff, he'd be staring out the windows, and you could tell that he was like imagining a TV show because he would do like sound effects and, and visual effects for himself and stuff, and the teacher would say, Oh, oh, oh Ricky, yeah, you do. <laughs> he would, we just thought this was weird. He would put his cheese puffs in his lemonade. Yeah. Right? He thought it was delicious, I guess. I, I think it was more for effect than anything else. The worst thing Ricky ever did to me personally, I was hanging upside down in the monkey bars, first grade, and, he, and you know how you have to lock your feet around so you don't fall? I'm just hanging, looking at the upside down world, enjoying myself, and all of a sudden Ricky kicks one of my feet loose. So down I go, and I landed like this, and guess what happened? <coughs> Broke that arm. 
You know what happens when your arm is broken way up here? There's no cast. They don't put a cast way up there. So I spent the two and a half months or something like that in a sling. That was Ricky. At the end of the year in first grade, they had this thing where we would we'd put a note on the bottom of a balloon, tied to a balloon, and then everybody would let the balloons go into like this big thing. And then the note had like a, a stamp and everything. So whoever found it, they could write where they found it and put it in the mail and then you'd get it back and it would be neat. You know, your balloon went so far and everything. Ricky cut the strings on several of those right as we're letting them off. So then the, peop the kid's note fell to the ground and the kid's balloon went flying. So their kid didn't get very far. So what did we hear that day? Oh, oh Ricky, right. So again, they have diagnosis for all that kind of stuff now. But I, I heard some, one time I heard a teacher refer to Ricky as hopeless. And Abby's going to read a verse right now from the Bible. Yeah, you can read it right there. Okay. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So that's Jeremiah 29, 11. Is anybody hopeless to God? No. no. Nobody is hopeless to God. A couple years later, some family-sponsored Ricky, my friend, who was not an Adventist, to go to Camp Asable. And he had a pretty amazing time. He heard some things that really changed him. And he wasn't perfect. Every now and then we would still hear. But he tried, and he was different. And you know who he's called now? He's Pastor Ricky now. So anybody, nobody is hopeless to God. And even naughty kids, if they decide to do the right thing, can even become a pastor someday. Okay? Does anyone want to pray? Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for this wonderful day. And let the kids be good. Amen. Amen. Go back to your seats now. Thank you. very special event coming up now and I, I want you to be praying in a special way that everything can go well because it's not easy for Patty to get up and down um, into the baptistry so just um, see the her desire and pray that the Lord will bless and that this will be a wonderful testimony to her desire to surrender her life to the Lord and Savior Amen. Amen. Good job, guys. In case you didn't know, um, Patty is uh, diabetic and she has poor circulation in one leg and trouble with uh, one of her toes. So it's, she's determined to be baptized. Amen. She didn't want to leave it any longer. You can do it by God's grace and you're helping to lean on.
Amen. Hey, isn't that great teamwork? So you know, this side. Yeah, you come, come both this side. Okay. Now, before I baptize you, Patty, I want to have a special prayer. A special prayer um, asking God to bless you and to give you strength and healing that you can keep your leg. The doctors have been talking about possible amputation, but we don't want that. Amen? Amen. So let's just bow our heads as we pray and ask the Lord for his special blessing. Dear Father in heaven, we're here grateful to what you have done for Patty. Asking, Lord, that you would bless her in a mighty way, that you would pour out your spirit upon her, give her spiritual healing and physical healing according to your will. Father, we want her to be a testimony. We want her to be a witness to her family, to her neighborhood. And Lord, she loves you and wants to give her life to you. And for that, we are extremely grateful. Dear Father, we ask that you would be with us now as we go through this sacred demonstration of her surrender to you. And Lord, may her heart be transformed and may ours also as we turn to you for salvation and grace so we can be ready for Jesus to come. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so you're going to want to go a bit forward now and then go weak in the knees when I baptize you, okay? You can hold it again here with both hands. That's it. Then you're going to help us. So, Patty, because of your profession of faith, it is my privilege and great joy to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look, everybody's happy. Praise God. There's rejoicing in heaven. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier to walk in the water. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Now. Can I lift her? Um, I can't lift both legs like that, can I? Yeah. Oh. oh. Praise the Lord. Oh, she's done it. God bless you. You've done it. Thank you. She's done it. Praise God. She's so happy. She succeeded. Is there anybody else that wants to follow in the Lord's path and surrender their life to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Just raise your hand if you want to be baptized soon. God be with you and God bless you. Amen. Our scripture reading today is Matthew 24, verses 37 and 39. If you'll turn with me, Matthew 24, verses 37 and 39. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And we read, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, I'm sorry, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his scriptures. I would ask each one of us to review the prayer requests and a couple that are added to the list. Um, a special prayer this week as our school starts Monday. 
How many of you have students that will be starting school this year? No, more hands, more hands, more hands. Yes, there, good, Mary Lou. Dad, Oli, we all have students, don't we? Don't we all have students? Amen. That's right, Mary Lou, they're all our kids. Here, it doesn't take a, a village to raise a child, it takes a church to raise a child. So we all have students starting in school, so pray for our students, pray for our teachers, especially this week as they start. Take, pray for our teachers. Also, uh, Linda Strong, a friend of Dave's, um, has a broken leg and will have surgery on Monday. Oh, who is it? Your sister. Your sister. Well, how come her name's Strong? <laughs> Benita's sister, I'm sorry, okay. Is it a friend of yours too, Dave, or not? Okay. <laughs> and also a reminder, as we were meeting in the room over here before the service, pastor asked us to pray for him. Now, I think he was just meaning the elders there, but I don't think he'll be at all disappointed if I extend that invitation to each one of us. Again, we are living in the last days, and Satan is after each one of us, but he knows that if he can get the shepherd, he can get the flock quite often. So I like to pray for our pastor and our past pastors, and I, I think it's a good habit for each one of us to be in. Also today, I have a special request. During my prayer, I'm going to pause. When I pause, I'm going to ask each one of you to pray for the person on your right. I didn't want to do this because that's my left, but that's your right. So on your right. Now, even if you don't know their name, God does. So when you pray for him, you can just say, the person on my right. Now, Eric's at the end of the row, so he's off the hook. Nah, wrong answer. He has to pray for the person on this side. So everybody gets prayed for, okay? So I'll just pause a moment in my prayer for you to pray for that person on your right. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters. We are our brothers and sisters' keeper. Um, again, I, I, maybe I've got some time to kill before pastor gets out here, but I'll try not to preach a sermon. I was blessed as we were picking up the offering baskets, the children's lamb's offering. Dave said to me, where are the walkers? That thrilled my soul because David wasn't checking up on him, but he was concerned. And we need to be that way. When someone's not in church, we should, hopefully, we miss them in Christian love. We're not keeping an attendance record, but where's my brother? Pardon? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, they, they are still on vacation, so nobody's in the hospital or anything. But So at this time, we'll sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus as we kneel and remember, pray for the person on your right. Our awesome God, Redeemer, Father, Brother, Comforter, forgive us of our sins this morning, cleanse our hearts and our minds, that we may be open to hear your word, open to receive the blessing that you have prepared for us. We pray for each one of the prayer requests, physical and spiritual healing, those that are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray especially for Pastor Ferez and Petra and his family. We pray that you will put a hedge of protection around them, that you will give him strength and courage to share your gospel, to feed your flock. 
We pray, Lord, for AJA, the teachers, the other staff, and the students, the parents, and each one of us as we support the students and the school. We pray that the school will be a haven of rest and peace in this world of sin and unrest. Lord, at this time, we are going to pause as we pray for the person on our right. And Lord, as we gather in your church, in your house, on your day, draw each one of us closer. Open our hearts and minds that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit. Bring us peace. Give us a Sabbath day's rest. Draw us closer to you and closer to each other to serve you, Lord. These things we pray, if be thy will. In thy name, amen. Thank you, Elena. Say another amen, folks. Amen. That is wonderful. Was that your first time for special music? No? Well, you did wonderful. Praise the Lord. It's great to have little girls. But something happens to little girls. And what's that? They grow up and they become young ladies. And then they get married. And uh, yeah, I experienced that for the first time. I, I'm sure you've seen some pictures, but I just want to thank um, the Lord for His goodness. You know, the Lord gave us a, a precious family. He gave us precious daughters. He, he gave us Esther, and you know, that was a gift from God. And uh, now God has given Esther to young Luke Penrod, and now they are... Um, Mr. and Mrs. Penrod, and uh, I can just tell you that that was a very emotional experience, very emotional experience, and uh, one that I really enjoyed, but um, had to ask a lot of help from God to actually be able to go through it. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we're here to hear your voice. We're here to open our hearts to your word. We're here, Lord, to be blessed, to be united by your Spirit. Oh, Father, we pray that you would cleanse our hearts from all unrighteousness. Father, we're here to praise you for the gospel. But, Lord, sometimes preaching the gospel can be a lonely thing. And often, Father, 
it is with little result. But I pray that you'd give us courage as your people. I pray you bless everyone here and everyone in the hearing of this message, that your spirit would speak to each and every one. Father, my prayer is that you would wipe away my sins and allow Jesus to shine through in your message, through your word. I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <clears throat> the days of Noah. The days of Noah. I don't know if um, any of you have been traveling out west to Utah, maybe, or places where the Grand Canyon is. Anybody been over there to the Grand Canyon? Powerful experience. Um, I remember one vacation, I think it was 2011 or 2012. Um, we went to the Grand Canyon, to the South Rim, and we went down, my wife and my daughters, um, early in the morning and came up again the same day. And of course, you know what they say about that, don't you? They say, don't do it. Um, it was a difficult journey, but it was a beautiful journey. We, we saw all of that canyon so many beautiful pictures, and to me, when I look at that and when we, we look at things like that, we can see um, evidence of the flood. You know, what we're told is that the Colorado River um, has, over millions of years, kind of carved that uh, great um, precipice that we have in the Grand Canyon. But of course, we have the creationist view, which says that there was a flood and that all of that, um, ever, all, all of that terrain was chiseled out by rushing waters as they were receding. Now, the story of Noah is important because God says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So, you have a comparison between what was going on at Noah's time and what will happen before the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be caught off guard. So how was the time in Noah? What was going on in that time? Any Violence, that's one of the things that we read in Genesis. Violence. It says marriage. And I thought, well, I just married my daughter. Is that a sign of the second coming of Jesus? Or is that um, something negative? I don't think so. I think what the, the Scripture is teaching, especially from um, chapter 6 in Genesis, let's go and have a look, is that the believers were marrying non-believers. And that was part of... Um, the falling away, if you like. So the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 that God's Spirit will not always strive. In verse 3, And the Lord said, My Spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, what we see here is a warning. 120 years until what? Until the flood would come. The Bible says in Genesis 6, 5, And God saw the wickedness of man, that it was great on the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So there was, there was evil, and every imagination of men's hearts were contrary to God. Do we see that today? Bible says that God was sad. In verse 6, it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have made and created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But, the Bible says in verse 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How about you? Have you found grace in the eyes of the Lord? 
Are you listening to the voice of God? Because Noah did, and he starts warning. He starts warning everyone of the, the flood that is to come. Now, if you, if you imagine, the earth is only about 1,600 years old uh, at this time. And men are living many, many centuries. Before the flood, you have this um, patriarchs of longevity. There's Adam that lives 930 years. In fact, Adam and Methuselah were alive at the same time. And we see that there was great wisdom and strength in these men. The Bible says that there were giants at that time. So it wasn't primitive. It was a sophisticated society. And here there is evil. There, people have been turning away from God. And Noah has been given a message of the Lord to say that there is a flood coming. But it's not just a message of destruction. It's a message of mercy. Amen? It's a message of mercy because Noah starts building this ark. And he does so um, against all scientific evidence. Up until then, there has been no rain. The the earth is watered. The gardens are, are watered by a dew that comes every morning. He's telling them that there's going to be a flood. And they say that that is impossible. Can you imagine preaching, giving the warning, building an ark, living according to the will of, and word of God, and people rejecting you, rejecting your message? Well, it's not your message, it's God's message. And that's, that's the important thing about this. Because Jesus says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the second coming. So the Bible tells us that he was a preacher of righteousness. And if we read in Signs of the Times, April 1, 1889, there is a comment that I'd like to read um, that goes along with this topic. The time of Noah prefigures the present age. Christ tells us, As it was in the time of Noah, so shall it be in the days that immediately precede his appearing in the clouds of heaven. Human nature in our day, uninfluenced by the Spirit of God, is the same as in the age of Noah. So where people turn away from God, it's the same, doesn't matter what age you're in. And Satan is not asleep. He is as active and vigilant now as he was then. While the voice of God is making itself heard through his servants in warning and entreaties, he is mustering his forces. He engages his host with gigantic energies to make, through his sophistries, cruelties, and oppression, the words of warning of none effect. So here we are. What, what's our name? What are we called? Christians. But we are Seventh-day Adventists. We're here to warn the world that Jesus is coming soon. But it can be a lonely work, just like Noah's work. The people are tested. The great mass will be found on one side of the great deceiver and will be overwhelmed in swift and irretrievable destruction. But those that heed the warning of God, and in their lives bring forth fruit, meat for repentance, shall dwell in the secret place of the Most High. They shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For with them is the promise, with long life will I satisfy Him, and show Him my salvation. Now I don't know if you... Put yourself in the place of Noah. People are laughing at him. People are saying he's a fanatic. People are saying, do, do you think you're the only one that's right? Scientists are telling us that what you're saying can't happen. It's never happened before. And here we are before the second coming of Jesus. We're expecting the Lord to come. And Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. 
You know, God is merciful. 120 years is a long time. Have any of you been preaching 120 years? No. We haven't been preaching 120 years in, in our lifetime. The church has been around longer than that. But think of it. Everything about him, his lifestyle, was saying that he believed in the words of God. He believed that a flood was coming. He built this massive boat on dry land. People are seeing him. He's not hiding his faith. He's showing what he believes. Amen? He's living in harmony with God's will. And the Bible says that he found grace and that he was righteous because he believed the word of God. Now, as he's building this ark, the ark comes to its completion. And then what happens? All the animals start coming in. They're with a, a supernatural manifestation, coming in two by two. The clean animals in sevens, the unclean animals in, in one pair. And then, can you imagine Noah giving his, his last appeal? Realizing he was living by faith, going by the word of God. And then he's inside with his family, and nobody has come in with him. And the Bible tells us that the angel, in visible form, the, the door is shut. And Ellen White says that the angel was seen by everybody, closing that door. Now, when that door closed, let me ask you a question. Could anybody open it? No human hand could open it. So what had closed? What, what, what a close. Yeah, I see somebody saying it. Probation had closed. Friends, for 120 years, the appeal was going out. Come in to the ark of refuge. Come in and be saved. Now, could anybody save themselves? No. But they would have to follow and obey the word that said, come into the ark. That would be like righteousness by faith. We accept the salvation that God gives us. All we can do is come into it. We cannot produce it. And the Bible tells us that there was one day, two days. Now, Noah is shut up in the ark with all the animals and his family and all the rest of the people outside, I imagine they're having a send-off party for Noah. They are drinking themselves happy. They are saying, how's it feeling inside there, Noah? How, how are you doing? How, do you have enough room in there? Of course, he did have plenty of room. But they were mocking and jeering even the more. And even for Noah, think about him. I don't know that the Lord told him it's going to be seven days that you'll be shut in there. I don't think he knew that. So that would have been a test of his faith too. Then the Bible tells us that after seven days, there was still life on earth that had been going on. But people were unaware. It's, it's interesting because what Jesus says here in, in Matthew 24, um, verse 39. Uh, well, let me read verse 38. For as it is in the days of Noah um, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Th does that mean that they didn't know anything, that they weren't warned? Is that what that means? They knew not? To know in the Bible means to, to accept and understand deeply. They had heard about it. But they didn't act upon it. They didn't believe it. You know, if we go to uh, Peter, let's go to Second Peter. We'll read here in chapter 3. A few verses. But before, before we, we read those, let me just focus on one more element here. The seven days go by. Everybody is partying outside and celebrating this poor old man that, you know, thought he's the only one that uh, 
knows what God's message is about, suddenly a raindrop falls and hits them on the head for the first time. Let me read to you a description found in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 99. Because it gives a very graphic description. And I don't know if any of you have been to um, the Creation Museum and, and seen um, the, the replica of the ark. Anybody been to see the replica of the ark? Some, some of you have. I remember before they had actually got that built, they were kind of raising funds to, to build it. They've built a life-size ark. And you go and look in, into that. I haven't been to see it. But I, I saw sections of it before they had the, the, um, the, the full complete model made. It's massive. Three stories high. About 900 feet long. It can take a lot of people. Let me just read from page 99, Patriarchs and Prophets. It says, but on the eighth day, so after the seven days of of quietness, the rain starts to fall. She says, dark clouds overspread the heavens. There followed the muttering of a thunder and flash of lightning. Soon large drops of rain began to fall. The world had never witnessed anything like this, and the hearts of men were struck with fear. All were secretly inquiring, can it be that Noah was right? And that the world is doomed to destruction? Darker and darker grew the heavens, and faster came the falling rain. The beasts were roaming about in the wildest terror, and their discordant cries seemed to moan out their own destiny and fate of many. Then the fountains of the deep were broken up. The fountains of what? The fountains of the deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. So from above and beneath, water was gushing out. Water appeared to come from the clouds in mighty cataracts. Rivers broke away from their boundaries and overflowed the valleys. Jets of water burst forth from the earth with indescribable force, throwing massive rocks hundreds of feet into the air. And these in falling, buried themselves deep into the ground. There's a, there's a one-minute video that they show at the Creation Museum there where the replica of the ark, ark is. And they, they show the earth splitting and great torrents of water just shooting up. And you know, that is quite in harmony with the biblical record. Let us take a look here. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3. And onwards, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, what? Scoffers. What are, what are scoffers? Mockers. Walking in their own lust, making fun, deriding, saying, you just believe in fairy tales. Walking after their own lust, saying, where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm amazed at the mercy of God and how easy we have it and how much protection we still have around us and in our living, in our daily lives. God is merciful. But that's not to say that the Word of God is not going to be fulfilled when it says that the Lord will come with the shout and there will be a mighty earthquake and there will be the outpouring of the seven plagues, the seven last plagues. Bible says, verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. The earth was doing what? Standing out of the water and in the water. It seems that beneath the earth's crust there were masses of water. At creation, we see that there's a dividing of the waters. And this was something that was going to bring the end of life on earth, except for those that were in the ark. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, what's he saying? He's saying this earth is reserved also for the judgment of God. 
By the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of who? Ungodly men. You know, ungodly men are those that don't follow the word of God. Those that follow the word of God, they find grace in the sight of God like Noah did and just obeyed. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So now he's going to explain why time still continues. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering. What does that mean? Patient. He towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? To repentance. What is Jesus doing now? He's waiting. He's waiting for us all to repent. He's waiting for you and I to repent. Do we have something to repent of? Oh, yes, we do. We all have something to repent of. But praise God. All we need to do is come to Jesus. Just like Noah was making that appeal. Come into the ark. That's all you need to do. Was it, was it such a hard thing to do? Really, it wasn't. You just had to believe and be saved. That's that simple today, friends, as well. God wants everyone to come to repentance. But notice he goes on and says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. But not, not for those that are waiting for him. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So don't work too hard on your house and on your property and so on. It's going to burn. That's the truth. What, what we should be doing is living like Moses, so that, that, uh, like Noah, sorry, so that people can see in our life that we believe what we say, that we believe that Jesus is coming soon. Where do we put our most effort? Where do we put our most, the most of our time, the most of our energy, the most of our finances? Friends, the Lord is wanting to prepare us for the second coming of Jesus. Seeing then that all these things, verse 11, shall be dissolved, it's going to go, disappear. God's going to make everything new. What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness? So basically he's saying, get ready. Be holy. Have Christ as your Savior. And do what? Verse 12, looking for and what? Hastening. Or hastening the coming of the day of God. We can hasten the coming of the Lord by being ready, by being surrendered, by being committed, by being faithful. Amen? We can hasten the Lord's coming by being united, by being of one accord, by having all things in common, by returning faithful tithes and offerings, by being together in the Spirit. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwell righteousness. Friends, today, at this time of earth's history, and at this time of the history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, it's time for us to come together as never before. It's, come, it's time for us to, to be in unity, in harmony, to obey the word of God and come into the salvation, come into the rest of Jesus Christ, that when Jesus comes, we will be safe in the ark. How many of you want to be safe in the ark of the arms of Jesus Christ? I do too. At this time, you can, you can come up and prepare for our closing hymn. I would like to invite um, our personal ministries leader, is Paula here, I think um, she may be outside. Just want to give to Patricia, I'm going to go down to where she is, okay, you can understand why. I want to give her her baptismal certificate and her discipleship handbook, I want to give her some gifts, so I just would like to do that at this time. There is rejoicing in heaven when one soul 
repents and turns to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you, Patty. Thank you. This says, Patricia Heitman was baptized at Holy Seventh-day Adventist Church the 18th of August, 2018, and received into the Holy Seventh-day Adventist Church of the Michigan Conference on the 18th of August, 2018, signed by our church clerk and oh, wow. myself. You. Paula, you have a gift? Come on and, and share that. Thank you. Special gift. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's so pretty. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. God bless you and welcome you. to the family of God. Yes. We're going to keep on praying for Patty. Amen? Amen. We're going to keep on praying that the Lord will give her victory day by day, one step at a time, and that she will be strong and healthy in the Lord. Let's sing our closing hymn. Father in heaven, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your long suffering. And Father, we pray that we would all turn to you with one heart. That Father, today we would see Jesus as our Savior and accept the invitation to come into his ark of salvation. Father in heaven, we have powerful testimony in your word that cannot fail. That what has happened before, as a fulfillment of prophecy, is a strong evidence, Lord, that your word is true. It cannot be broken, that Jesus will come again soon. Those that have accepted him will be on his right hand and those that have rejected on his left. Father, I pray that each one of us would have, by the grace of God, our sins forgiven and cleansed, and that we would heed your word, that we would be united together in your ark of salvation, and be ready for Jesus to come. Father, hear our prayer. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And thank you that you've given us this great message 
to share with the world that Jesus is coming soon. May you help us in this task. Pour out your spirit so we can do it in your strength. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.